What's going on, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of the podcast. Hello, how are you today? My name is Mitch Corbett. I'm your host uh, for this lovely podcast, and this week we have Dano O'Shea. Dano is the band leader and drummer for the band My Son the Hurricane. Uh, My Son the Hurricane is a band outside of, uh, formed in Niagara Falls, St. Catharines, that sort of area. uh, They're they're a 12-piece band full of brass, hip-hop, guitar, bass. It's you gotta check them out really is what i'm saying you gotta check them out to understand them and uh, i think you'll do yourself a favor when you do check them out because they're incredible um they've been touring uh they just announced a bunch of dates um for around ontario and i think the rest of canada to be honest um so they might be coming to a town near you they hit up all the spots i think they're going to peterborough um sarnia london it, there's if you if you like a good time there's a chance that you'll be able to get to see them play and perform this summer um they also really love their craft and that's why i like this conversation with daniel as we get into like how does a 12 piece band work uh with so many different elements and so many different pieces from all around not only just canada but like north america all around uh how does it all work and we get into the details of that sort of thing it's a great conversation i really enjoyed it um go check them out on their uh, instagram youtube myspace especially their youtube they actually put a lot of great effort into their music videos which i appreciate as a video producer and uh yeah there's nothing not a bad word i can say about these guys um really so please check out this interview with dano check out this interview with dano o'shea and then go check out my son the hurricanes uh a catalog of music on Spotify or wherever you can find music. But let's get to the interview with Dano O'Shea. Two dollar beers really came in handy, eh? What's that? Those two dollar beers really always came in handy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, as I as I recall, or don't recall, yes. <laughs> when we were younger, when we could actually like handle our alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. it's been a while I, I haven't had a drink oh geez it's been a long time long oh yeah really time. seven years oh congratulations oh thanks man and now i have the uh i have the the fake stuff so my fr- my friend phil just became uh just came sober and he 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 sounds like do the uh do the non-alcoholic beers like do they do they work and he's like they saved my life <laughs> is what <he> yeah <laughs> Yeah, well, for me, I just like to hold on to something, you know, it, it, it helps in that respect. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to, um, I'm on day three of like trying to just cut back severely on the drinking uh, and lots of water and Coke Zeros and stuff like that. No, well, <laughs> to hey. keep my, my sanity. Yeah, that'll do it for you. Yeah, I imagine that like um, drinking and we are like, dr- I mean, you're, <laughs> like traveling the world that the rock star lifestyle is kind of a thing that you had to go through or I guess yeah that. yeah no I, I definitely like went hard and enjoyed that part of it and then when it started getting bigger and I started the label and everything I realized like I just can't just can't do it anymore not too much that I had kids too so I was like you know okay I gotta decide like <laughs> who, who do I want to be here because I was like getting pretty pretty mangled all the yeah. time so but yeah i'm glad i did it though i will say that i don't regret that time all right well i think this is a good jump house well i'm here with uh dano from uh my son the hurricane drummer band leader uh thanks for joining me on the podcast hello how are you today uh, how are you today <laughs> i am doing very well thank you for having me on said <laughs> podcast well it's like i i've known i've known you for a while but like i don't we're not really friends but like I remember interacting with you back when we did the Backyard Wrestling Federation in St. Catharines, Ontario. Um, I've always been a fan of My Son the Hurricane. And whenever I tell people about My Son the Hurricane, because I always try and push new music and stuff that is good on other people, especially on cruise ships. I appreciate that. I always have to tell them, like, you gotta check this band, My Son. And then it's like, uh, they're like, all right, what is it about? It's like, um, it's a good question. What is, what is it? Yeah. <laughs> Because yeah, you guys are I mean, brass, you're a hip hop, you're singing, you are, um, you have about 20 people in your band, including behind the scenes stuff. I mean, mm. it's insane how you guys are able to put all this together. So, I mean, you guys got kids, you got jobs now, you're a traveling full time band. Like, how yep. does this whole thing work? Or does it even work? Is that how are the no, magic? <laughs> no, no, it, it, it definitely works. I, I think, you know, um, 
in regards to how we define it, you know, as someone who, you know, does the management and the agent work for Hurricane, part of my job is to sell the band. And so it's always been really tricky to, to explain what it is because people see horns and they assume, well, is it jazz? Well, no, it's not jazz. Is it ska? Well, not really. Is it hip hop? Well, I guess kind of because of Jacob, but so yeah, it's always been tricky to define it. There's, there's definitely a lot of that stuff. I usually just send people a video and be like, this, this is what you're looking at in terms of how we do it. Yeah. It, we probably about five years ago realized that we needed to make this a full on business or it was not going to work because, you know, we had to pay all these people. I know a lot of bands who are three pieces, who never get paid and we realized that we needed to make it so that the band was getting paid people could pay their mortgages and they have kids and things like that and um so yeah it's been uh creating the business creating the label i own our label vegas funeral it's been it's been very very interesting but uh it's it's nice because we have all the control which is really important because we want to tour a lot <laughs> and that seems to be like a um a big thing that's happening in today's world with COVID-19 with uh, artists, comedians, musicians, like a lot of people are going off and doing their own thing and having that creative control and having that it's, it's theirs and no one can really fuck with it sort of thing. Like how important was it for you guys to be able to like branch out and finally decide to do that? And like, I mean, cause that's a bold, that's a ballsy decision to kind of like say, no, let's do it on our own. Uh, well, <laughs> I mean, if I'm being very honest, it, it's because nobody wanted to touch it. You know, they saw, they, you know, as we went to management places and agencies, they all said the same thing. This is a really cool band, um, but you could never tour it and it could never go overseas and it could never go in the States and stuff like that. And we proved all that wrong. In fact, you know, that's some of the places we're biggest in the world. So yeah, it was ballsy at, at first, it seemed like, but it was only, you know, it's uh, one of those necessity is the mother of invention things because there just wasn't, there wasn't an option, you know. I, I can understand how someone would look at a band like ours and go, that's a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's awesome, but it's not sustainable. And so it really became important to me to find a way to make it sustainable long term. And one of the main ways was that we have this pool of musicians. I look at it like a hockey team. We have our first line, our main line. And if someone can't do it in the band, if they can't say they're standing up in a wedding or something like that, then we have other musicians we can go to to bring in to continue our tours to continue the shows and this allows me not to be an emotional band leader it also allows our players a little bit of freedom maybe they get a better gig off or maybe they get something else and i don't have to be pissed off when that happens so it's really nice to be able to have those things and in fact this is the first year that we've done shows without jacob who's our our, our main fella um and so our singer sylvie has also stepped in and she'll you know on certain shows she does the rapping and the singing and the dancing so we have all sorts of variations to be able to, to continually do the, do the thing. But yes, at the beginning, quite ballsy. It's uh, you mentioned Sylvie and uh, I had to do a little background check on her and I didn't notice she came from Owen Sound. And I'm like, uh -huh. oh, she, and I, I'm thinking about it. I'm like, I was born in Owen Sound and I'm like, I can't recall anyone that talented ever coming from Owen Sound. So are you sure she's from Owen Sound or did she, <laughs> how was She's 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 a bit of a uh, nomad. I know she she grew up all over the place, but um, yeah. So she's in she's in Owen Sound. The the band is kind of scattered, right? I mean, yeah. I was looking I, at uh, it, and it's like it's like <laughs> it's like one of those like if you put a map up, you and you put like a, a central put piece for the band, you take a pin and put the string, and it's all across Ontario. <laughs> yeah, totally. And and we even have guys that we use predominantly in the states. You know, for a bunch of guys from Cleveland. And uh, one of our guys in Ottawa, Sylvie's in Owen Sound, a few are in Hamilton, most are in Niagara or Toronto. So uh, we don't exist the way a traditional band does in terms of like, you know, we don't rehearse that way. We do everything in sheet music form first. So I can send people sheet music, they can learn it like that without ever having the band around. And it's a matter of learn this, see you on stage, <laughs> have it together. Mm -hmm. And so it involves like, you need to have a lot of faith in your people, obviously, uh, but we do. And uh, it's only been once or twice that it, it hasn't worked out. Um, so, you know, how there's, so how I much, mean- 
go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. I, like you're, you're talking about all the different band members and like, but like you guys have, like, I've seen you guys perform multiple mm-hmm. times and you guys have such energy on stage. Like, like when you find people to kind of like be your roster lineup, like first line, second line, like is it word of mouth or do you have to do any sort of research into it? Or cause like, the, it, like you've seen bands that are like very good, but they they don't have that energy. They don't, don't last long. Whereas then you have bands that are so energetic and then like, <laughs> they just burn out sort of thing. So how do you find the happy middle crap? Right. So when we find new players, it's funny. It, the playing is actually one of the last things I looked at because, you know, um, if you're a professional player, we just assume you've got it together. And uh, uh, what we're really looking for is people who aren't too committed to other things, people who are really excited, people who want to tour things like that so whenever I say first line second line third line it's not that a third line player is a worse musician first might be even the opposite it's just a matter of who communicates the best who you know hits it off with the crowd you know like the crowd is really picked members that they really really like it's just you can't make that up you know so yeah and we even have like videos of all the stage moves we send it to new people we're like this is it you know make it your own and just remember, you know, we always tell new people, you know, because we have three new ones this year. Uh, I'm like, you know, you're now part of the team. Like, we back you. So you're you're stronger than you were before. It's, it's pretty it's pretty exciting to see new, new people when they come in. Now, when you guys, like, you guys have, um, you guys have had so many people come in and out of the band just because, like, mm-hmm. over time, you guys have been around for a long time. Over time, you know, things happen. People move on. Uh, people want... Um, when you guys have like the three new people, for instance, like we're mentioning sports as a, as a kind of like an example, is there any like hazing rituals or anything that you guys do <laughs> or any initiation I, I, that they had to do? You know, I think early in the band, you know, early in the band, we were, uh, the funny thing is like hurricane is about 10 years old, but in some ways it's only about five years old because those first five years I was out touring with other bands. A lot of the other guys were, it was, to be a very side project it wasn't supposed to be anything that took off or made any sort of money um and you know we had great players back then and we i i, I didn't know how to run the ship correctly we didn't we're we're really learning as we went and you know we were hazing ourselves back then and now what's funny is i think you know new people join the band they're expecting some giant party they're not expecting the fact that you know we go off stage and we go watch law and order you know okay, so no so people i i think they i i think they have a you know we we had some people come to our green room at the phoenix we played the phoenix last month and venue, they're like holy this, shit yeah huge venue <laughs> and great great venue and they're like wow you know you have this huge show at the phoenix and i think i was expecting you guys to all be partying and said so, you know we were like eating roti and just like you know He's just having their kids now. yeah kids. and every, every, everyone was just like relaxing and <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's it's much it's much quieter than I think. But what's neat is again on the road, you know, we don't stop people from living that lifestyle. If we have new people who want to go out and they want to party, awesome, enjoy yourself. It's important that they have that experience. Whereas us old guys, for us, it's not really important to to have that. We we need the sleep. So we really, you know, I'm really cognizant of what people need. You know, I think that that good leaders really like understand what motivates people and if i force those young guys to always go to bed early or forced us to go out all the time it, it, it wouldn't make for a positive experience for either of us yeah i mean like i think that that's the uh the great thing about you know like yourself being like you've you've done that you've you've paid your dues you, you you've done the <laughs> you've you've probably uh, done the hung, hangovers hungover sets and then got another hangover and so on and so forth and like you're able to pass that knowledge on i imagine but you let them be free. Um, I mean, like, like you guys started out 10 years ago. You said the first five years were kind of like a hobby and everything, but you were in such an environment like St. Catharines in Niagara, where you had halftime nights, uh, Ill Scholar performed very frequently, Scene Fest was a big thing. Did, mm-hmm. like, you guys grew up in the scene where, like, there were so many young, street pharmacy, can't leave those yep. guys out. Yeah, great like, band. Yeah, like, they, you, grew, you guys came from a scene where, like, there were so many talented individuals and you guys, I imagine there's some incorporation of talent uh, either way, either which way. What was that like in that time period, like being around all those creative, fun, outgoing minds? It was, you know, it, it, 
it's and we still are but it did definitely seem like you know those scene years and playing scene festival for instance you know uh that was one of the reasons we started actually i even started the band because of a show at l3 where a, pro, a, a promoter, you know, it was Ill Scarlet and Dan with Webster, and they had asked. I was you know, at that show. Oh yeah, for sure. we, and we and we played on we played on like the small stage downstairs, and um, oh yeah, underneath know, underneath the staircase, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. I got. So had, I remember that because like I was there with my uh, girlfriend at the time. I definitely smoked a joint with Bucky from uh, Down with Webster in the back as well. <laughs> yeah, I think we we might have all done that. <laughs> the uh, but I, I think it was really, you know, it was humble beginnings, but I put this thing together with a friend of mine. And again, we just, you know, we just like clamored on stage and we're trying to figure out, you know, it's there's such an art to having a huge band. You know, we it took a long time before we really figured out what is it like, what is this band, you know? And like I said, it took about five years. It wasn't until 2016 when we, I was like, everything's going to change and we we changed a bunch of musicians we we added sylvie we start oh i started the label we ha started getting like you know financial backing and it really changed like everything changed so so fast you know we went from touring like i think we had been out of province once to just being in every province and then being in all these states and then all of a sudden you know you're in sweden and you're in norway and the crowds are fucking huge and like they're backed up around the, the corner and you're thinking how the hell did this happen like we're just this band that formed to play down with webster show not a band that was supposed to go and make real money and then you know i remember when we wrote our taxes for that year just for the band alone you know we paid like 50 grand in tax you know and like it, it was it was just really 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 interesting to see it, it all change um that being said you know uh when COVID hit and uh you know the world took a shit we ended up uh <laughs> a giant you know, shit <laughs> a giant shit um it was really interesting for all of us to jump back into like the real world you know like all of us just had a really weird time with it because to try to make other people understand what you've been doing for the last 10 years they just it's just so hard to understand, you know, when, you know, most people work a regular job and they're consistently doing said job and they might go on vacation once in a while, but they certainly don't go out for like 74 days like all over the place and, and, you know, do a hundred shows a year, et cetera, et cetera. So I think it was just really odd for all of us to suddenly be, you know, a lot of us at the bottom of, of the food chain in that respect. So it, it, it was neat. And some of us have, you know, cool jobs, you know, some of us are just working dog jobs. It just, it just depends. Um, but we are very fortunate now that it's starting to, we believe, I mean, it's hard to speculate, but we believe yeah. that, uh, you know, we have 62 dates on the books this year, which is less than we would want. But given that we're coming out of COVID, I'm very happy if they, you know, if they happen and like so like i can relate to that because like i worked on cruise ships for eight years and i cannot talk to anyone outside of anyone that's done that sort of lifestyle about that lifestyle because they don't understand that lifestyle <laughs> just like in the sense i would never understand like what it's like to go out in front of like two thousand people in sweden sort of thing so like mm -hmm. when you were doing that going through that five years now 10 years process like what was your big aha light bulb moment where like it was working and you guys were going to go do it. Yeah. I, I remember we had, we had released a song smile and it got picked up all over the place and, and, you know, it was getting radio play and things were happening and that seemed good. It, it, basically the reason the band started again in two, 2014, I kind of, we took a year hiatus and I had a kid. I, I was the first one in the band to have a kid. I had a daughter and I just wanted to, I wanted to get sober and I wanted to figure it all out. And, and we had never played out of, province yet and I remember saying to my partner at the time I was really frustrated that I felt like we could people would like this other places and I think we had gone to evolve which is this huge festival in in New Brunswick and we just slayed it and then a couple of weeks later we were in BC and we played this festival and we just slayed it and then there was like this onslaught of 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 bookings coming in 
And I think that was kind of the you know the first time you play for a thousand, the first time you play for two thousand, first time you play for ten thousand, and then starting to play with your heroes. You know, Jason Isbell's my favorite singer. We started playing with Jason Isbell. We started doing these other things, playing with all these bands. You know, going out with the Slackers and going, and it was so um, gratifying. And you know, we still kind of we always joke about it too that you know we play these shows. The show's amazing. People come up and they give you so much love and they tell you what it means to them and they buy merch and all this stuff and then at the end of the show we're just like we keep thinking that someone's gonna knock on the door one day and be like well that's it you had your fun <laughs> now go work you know and i now go have work at subway so it's um it, yeah there there were several aha moments no doubt but it it was really over like a year or two and when we started realizing that you know the money was coming in and we they're like festivals are like well bring you know bring your guitar tech and bring your lighting tech and we're like oh yeah we will and then we're like oh my god we don't have those we should probably get those and you know you you get those things and then you realize that i remember when we sold like a thousand vinyl we're like what? who the hell is buying all this shit so it, yeah everything just really changed and then when vegas funeral which is my label we just I just decided to make this um, financial commitment to the band. What I, what I was going to say is that what, what's funny to me is, you know, we, we talk about how well it's done, but, you know, um, in those early days, I remember our first time playing in Ottawa. This is before things went well. You know, I remember paying everyone with a toonie after the show. <laughs> it was so, it was so it was very, very humble, very humble beginning. So um, to for it to be where it is now you know we don't we don't take that for granted we also bust our asses too so which is nice yeah i mean like <laughs> you guys have like i think 13 members on stage right yeah it's so 10 to 13 uh, on any night 10 13 <laughs> i mean like the connection that you guys like there's gotta be moments when you guys are performing where you kind of just look at each other and you're just like what the fuck is happening <laughs> Right now, oh. it's gotta be such a cool and unique feeling because like i know when i do comedy and, I, and it and like i do a good set i'm so proud but like i can't imagine sh i'm not able to really share that with anyone but you guys get to share that with each other and i can't imagine like what the family uh barbecues in the future are gonna look like with all the kids and you guys and stuff yeah. like, it's gonna be so cool well it it is it's amazing you know and and you're right you know walking on stage you know i like to you know like tell everyone you know go have fun have fun have, as they're going on stage um and yeah i um yeah it's just it's amazing a lot of times like we'll be playing and i'll look over i'll be like hey there's victoria you know like she's about 10 years younger than me she's from Waterdown. there's uh you know i was like that's so cool and the, i look around there's there's evan he's from ottawa he's 20 you know and i think all these things that had to happen for all these people to get together and um and what an amazing thing and here we are in sweden or here we are in estonia or here we are wherever and um what a yeah it is it is amazing every once in a while you'll catch just like and I, I'm telling you, it's like the split second, you know, someone's turning and dancing, you just catch eyes. And that's the moment. That's like the, that's the moment. And yeah, it's, it is so hard to explain, but I, I always tell people that, you know, if I died today, I could say I did it. I say, yeah, I, I'm very lucky in, in that respect. So yeah, it's, it, it is wonderful. We do share those moments. We do hug a lot afterwards because, you know, there's, we do have a lot of love for each other. I, I've definitely been in bands that are, you know, dysfunct, dis, yeah, or all business, but like dysfunctional, you know, and like, like the police, but without any money or hits or <laughs> notoriety. And it's I, like, I am not going to Phil Collins the shit. I swear to God. Yeah, exactly. And you're just like, oh man, it's just so that's just such a bummer and you know instead we do so well but we also we're really cognizant of each other and we really like you know I, i'm kind of in boss mode but sylvie is under underneath me and the and she's really um tuned into the band tuned into the personalities and she'll come up to me and say hey so and so is having a tough time right now let's lay off them with the jokes or let's do this or or so and so just needs some time alone like that's great because I'm not plugged into that because I'm, I'm so in the business mode, which you need someone to be. And, you know, I, I talked to this other big band. They said, we're frustrated because we released the song and not everyone in the band shared it. And I said, you know what? It doesn't matter. 
I'm like, the truth is that's not their job. Their job is to come and play and have a good time. And if they decide to do that, awesome. We all appreciate it. But choose the hills you're going to die on. To me, someone not making a Facebook post, is, that is not where, that's not the hill. Small you potatoes. Know? As much as Small potatoes. As yeah, absolutely. It's, it's like, cho- choose your battles. You know, and uh, we're, so we're, we're very, very comfortable with what we do. Now, I think one of the coolest things about you guys is that like you're such a large collaborative group, um, and you, I can tell that you got that you guys are my age because like you're I can tell you're heavily influenced by much music, the old school type of thing because oh, your it. music because your music videos are so they're they're so creative. Like you've done comedy, you've done serious. Like how do like do you guys do you do do you, do you do that in house the music videos or do you? have someone you go to like how does that work because like that's <laughs> that's a lot of people to put together on set and get, get it done all in like probably, right. like, probably a two-day thing right so if it's some of the skit things because we one of the things is we love comedy too right like, and we love we love i don't want to say stupidity but we we just love weird stuff and we're just we're not afraid to to fly that flag so things like you know we have like some skits like you know us playing road hockey or hurricane you know how we get to a gig or we us becoming a new metal band like we have some funny some funny ones or jacob and i when we became dads like getting our our fanny packs and dad jackets (laughs) um yes as for and the videos the videos are are usually a process and actually they're usually like 18 hour days we usually get like one big 18 hour day everything everything is tricky with hurricane in terms of scheduling but i've really I've really nailed it down same with recording like it's such a scheduling thing you have to be a person who likes scheduling um but Your you know it's on time for every event all the time. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to- totally and uh you know a lot of times when it comes to the ideas it's it's often jacob and i because you know jacob is a, he's the rapper for those he is who don't a, he's a character in itself i know for well, sure. <laughs> he, yeah absolutely and he's a character and he's like he gets hooked on things. He gets like, he, Jacob is the king of the four month obsession, you know? And like, and it could be anything. We're talking go-karts or Glenn Fry from the Eagles or extreme death metal or stand-up comedy or whatever. <laughs> There's always something. So, you know, we like to play on that. So we, we come up with ideas. Maybe we'll smoke one. We'll come up with ideas and we'll just see what can work in same way. Like, you know, we obviously love the 90s. We cover a bunch of 90s tunes every once in a while. We even do a Slayer tune in our, our set. So there is, like, we're, we're not afraid to do things that really don't make a ton of sense. Like, I think some people kind of give us the hairy eyeball sometimes saying, well, I don't know if I would have done that. But to us, like, sometimes the stupidity is worth it, you know. Uh, be weird if you're weird. Because, yeah, like, I, I think people can tell, like, when we do something dumb that we're genuinely, it's bringing us joy so fuck it you know like (laughs) like my life is too short to be considered you know to be worrying about you know in aa we always learn about uh what other people think of you is not your business and in some ways you know when you run a band it is your business and but we we've just kind of decided that no we're we're going to continue to do the silly stuff silly videos yeah we did one that was like a grand theft auto ripoff and yeah, so so we we definitely love a pop culture reference. And so, like in speaking of that, I mean, like with the pandemic, with everyone having to be kind of like <laughs> isolated from each other, like has that boosted creativity, like as as a necessity to help with the band, or was it kind of like I don't know to do my hands, let's just take a break for now and kind of recharge. I think. I think at first it was the crushing depression, (laughs) but (laughs) after that, then it was, I think, I think you're right. You know, I I can speak for myself and saying like creatively. So Chris, our guitarist and I, he would come over for like a socially distanced backyard jam and we're just like coming up with stuff. And um, we decided that, you know, again, we couldn't really get together. So we would do recording sessions because we really only bring in the band in three or four people increments to record. So, you know, we released a song, Mississippi 88, which is, I think, like one of my favorite songs I've ever written. And we have a new one to go in and do. So I think we definitely wrote more, which is nice. Uh, complained a lot. <laughs> I think I think that's it. I, it it's hard to say. I, I know some people are so innately creative. We 
Hurricane is the scenic route for everything, you know. We I always joke that we will call our tours the not optimal tour because, you know, this isn't the greatest way, but we're doing it. So, uh, you know, we we did get some stuff done. And so, like, the like the road <laughs> stories that you guys probably share, oh, the moments together. My to word. Share. I mean, are you, are you, are you, can you share any of those online? <laughs> or are those uh, online? Where, where do you, it, it, you know, it's kind of hard to even begin, but somebody brought up a, a decent point the other day that we were telling some, some road story, you know, and they said, where, where did that happen? And I said, it literally could have happened in Iowa, BC, overseas, the East coast, New, like we just, we don't know, you know, the, those times really, um they they really stick together I, I was thinking about how we played in in Omaha in Nebraska and it was you know I don't really read Fahrenheit very well you know obviously I'm Canadian um and as we we're getting to the uh the venue or the festival and the sun's blaring and it's so hot and I looked down I'm like guys it's this is 104 like what do you is that and i checked it out it's like 39 celsius or something and we we proceeded to play and i think three people threw up on the stage one you know <laughs> sylvia almost fell off this is, like it was the hottest we've ever been and i think afterwards i like everyone was you know everyone was mad and feeling awful i i think i took us all out for dairy queen and uh <laughs> everyone was thrilled and I was joking I was like what a dad moment you know to raise morale we're going to Dairy Queen <laughs> um but you know we a lot of our fun times are like you know we're a breakfast band we all get together we have these huge breakfasts <laughs> and there's like there's just a million inside jokes you know it's hard to think of one on, on the, the spot but I know that especially if more of us are, are around um I was talking to to Jacob about my favorite comment on a photo we've ever had which was a picture of him that I took from behind the drum set and he's got his foot up on the monitor and his hands in the air and there's probably about 10,000 people with their hands in the air in the crowd it's a really amazing shot and the comment underneath that picture is not congratulations or wow that's amazing it's from his wife and all it says is I threw out those shorts three weeks ago and to which he responded I know I got them out of the trash. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I remember thinking that's so, it's just such a funny thing, you know, we, and, and it, what's really strange is having like a surrogate family because you miss your family so badly when you're on the road, you do, especially you're gone for a long time, but then you have like this summer camp of people that you would never stick together, you know, in certain ways. We also tour in two vehicles, which is really smart because, you know, like Sylvie and I love each other dearly, but we can't always be together, you know, and it's, it's a way to really make things work better when you can have a little bit of time apart and, uh, you know, and let everyone, let everyone have their space. But there is a million, a million moments, like forgetting a base, you know, in the hotel room to like, just, there's just a million. I, I know we used to set up obstacle courses. We get drunk and we find things in our hotel rooms and make an obstacle course for everyone. And uh, you guys so are just giant kids, aren't you? There's like tree we, forts. And <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, exactly. And you, you know, you end up, but you got to have your fun, you know, because it can get serious out there and it can get homesick and you can get lonely and you can get, and you're feeling shitty because you know, you're and, living on like continental and, breakfast. And I think that's like, you see like the solo artists that perform and like you see a lot of them like a prime example would be probably someone like Britney Spears like who's performing consistently on the road all the time and you know they have these horrible unfortunate breakdowns because there's so much pressure on them and I feel like you guys like you have all this pressure with you guys to perform but you have everyone to kind of like take yourselves out of that pressure if that makes sense yeah, yeah. no and it really does and and I get that and I think that what's happened is what one of the problems is when when you get really successful like someone like Britney Spears or something like that which is amazing um you know so you get the money and you get the fame and all those things feel great but then the money people start to come in the money people are the dangerous people because they're telling you what you know let's maximize this and let's do this for us you know if someone screws up on stage I don't like even as the band leader I don't feel the need to give them shit after if they, they screwed know. up well if they screwed <laughs> up they know and they don't want to do it again, you know? And, um, 
what's really funny is I record every show. I record every show on my phone just so I can listen back and just, just for myself and everyone. What's funny is you can hear the rhythm section really talks to each other. No one can hear us because we don't have mics, which is great. So it's just like a constant amount of shit bagging each other, you know, like, you know, on the last show, the one of them was, I could just hear the bass player just as the song ends. He looks over at me and goes, Jesus, you're ugly, eh? Like, just so like <laughs> hey, man, I'm married. I, I, yeah, I did pretty I good just, for myself. I just love, I just love that kind of like ball busting, and yeah, just take yourself out of it. And to be honest, the the performing is the easiest part. It's the waiting that's like the giant pain in the ass. So yeah, it's been you know, whiff, oh, I can't, I cannot wait to get on the road. I think, you know, and, and to speculate, I assume it'll be a, bit, a little bit later than we anticipate, but we'll see. And like you mentioned, like the waiting being the most difficult part of like war game for a show. Like you always hear about like athletes, musicians, comedians, like anyone in the artistic <laughs> form who do performance art of like pregame rituals and everything. So like, do you guys have like a group pregame ritual or do you guys all have your own individual sort of thing? Like, is there anything that like you do to get ready for a show? Mm, well, that's a great question. I, I think everyone is a little bit differently, you know, like in terms of their um, individual warming up and stuff like that, which is good. You know, what's funny is for me, because I, I do all the driving of one of the vehicles and I'm doing all the band stuff, generally when the opener is on, and I never mean this as any disrespect, I sleep. And I wake, I like to wake up like 10 minutes before we go on. Um, you're definitely just, that. Be, <laughs> just be yeah, totally i know I, i'm just resting my eyes and I, I i think it's partially just because my brain's been on 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 and whenever i take a second to relax then i can really enjoy going on stage um you know coops always working out on the practice pad and chris is you know got his guitar and everyone's doing that stuff and the horns are getting warmed up um but jacob's usually t- like telling us some story and we're we're laughing a lot like there's People always say, this is something I love that promoters consistently say, you know, when Hurricane comes into the venue, it's like a gang is there. It's like, you know, 13U plus all your techs and all this gear we tour with lighting rigs and risers and all this shit. And they're like, bang, it goes up so fast. And like, everyone's laughing. Everyone's like joking with each other, making fun of each other. And, you know, then you guys sound check and then you have a great meal and everyone's laughing. And like, they're like, you know, it just seems so actually like community base i love that i love that shit you know it's just you you can't beat it it's when you a, when you mentioned gang i just i just pictured everyone in the band like walking in snapping fingers on <laughs> oh like west side story yeah yeah we haven't come in like the jets yet or anything like that but i know it is it is we're, we're a very nerdy gang but yeah <laughs> everyone's paying playing pokemon go or something like that yeah, yeah. <laughs> there probably is somebody doing that yeah uh now like with the future looking forward to the band and everything i mean like i mentioned how like man i would love to like be a, a fly on the wall when you guys are like older and you're doing like the big family reunion with every band member and their band members kids and <laughs> like i just it, i love this idea of this community that you guys have within the band but like you've traveled so much so like what have been like like when you go to different communities, like what's their reaction to you guys? Because they've probably never seen such oh. a big act, right? Yeah, and generally blown away. And what's really neat is that one of the things that we we wanted to say is, of course, that we're playing the big cities, of course. But we're not scared of the small town too, right? So it's like, you know, you can see, you know, Toronto and New York and whatever on the bill. But you'll also see like Thomas, West Virginia or clarksburg ontario wherever and people be like what the hell are those about and to me it's just like well you know any way to make the fans and if they're excited then we're in we're ready to come um so yeah it's it's incredible it is incredible because yeah they've never seen anything like it and maybe they've just heard the name before but they don't really know and then they see it like usually the first two or three songs people are just like mouths agape like, what the hell is this? And sometimes, I remember we played this big festival in Michigan and the band before us, it was a, another, it was like a big collective of artists doing a tribute to the Beatles and they were quite good. And I remember hearing somebody say, and there was like 5,000 people in the audience. And um, I remember hearing somebody say, I wouldn't want to go after that. And all we were thinking is, oh, we'll go. And then we, and we did, and we signed CDs to like four in the morning. 
So it was, you know, it, it's, yeah, it's just, it's just great. You know, then you like, you wake up the next morning, you feel, I mean, you feel rugged because I'm old and, but uh, yeah. And when you talk about family, it, like once a year, we do a show at Blue Mountain and we all bring our families for that one. So it's cool. So like the kids are running around and, and like, we have such an age group in the band. We have a 25 year age difference in the band from oldest to youngest. So they're at a totally different, you know, place than I am. Like I could technically probably have a kid that's older than our trumpet player. Um, but so it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's different. And uh, even when people leave the band, you know, I always try to like, you know, keep up with them see what they're doing and, you know, just see how they're progressing. I love that stuff. Now you mentioned uh, your dad's and you mentioned that you're the driver of the, one of the vehicles that you guys take. So pre-kid, post-kid, how are your driving skills? Were you always like first there to get venue beforehand or now you like that your dad, like, are you like, the, no, no. are you 10, nine, uh, <laughs> nine, 10? Uh, no. Well, so I, I drive one of the big trailers. Right. And, and we leave, we leave before everyone. I'm on a fucking mission. Like that's the difference. Like people know that if you're in my car, there are very few stops. We are going. You know, and uh, you know, and, and I listen to like bluegrass and talk radio. So has, like, has I, the other know, car ever tried to beat you in a race or anything like that? I imagine there's. Oh well, they, they they could always kick our ass, especially you know when you're pulling six thousand pounds behind you. It doesn't, Fair doesn't enough, help. Yeah. Doesn't really help anything. Um, but yeah, so like you know, for them, say they want to check out some roadside attraction. Bummer for me. I would love to see it too. But to me, it's like get to the venue, then we know things are all right. So that's just how it works on on the flights though it's it's glorious because for me it's like well there's nothing else to do let's you know, let's hang out and you know these big long flights you end up you end up talking to band members who some of them some of them you know i just don't get a chance to chat with very often so it's usually me and jacob or me and sylvie or me and fraser so it's nice to, to have a change and like you get to go to all these like festivals and see all these other acts too like i mean kind of take me like let me be a fly on the wall a little bit like what are like the interactions with other bands because i mean they're small acts or big acts or large acts i mean and you probably gotten to interact with so many different characters so, and so, talented so many. people like how how cool is that like do you ever pinch yourselves like i can't believe i'm talking to so-and-so yes yeah without a doubt i think i think where most of those interactions come is in the food tent you know because all the artists end up migrating there or, or, you know, a lot of times they put all the uh, artists up at the same hotels. So, but I, I usually find it's in the food tent that, you know, I remember somebody took this picture and I wish I could find it, but it's really neat. And it, like a bunch of the band members are all spread out. And I remember looking and it was like, you know, myself and Sylvie are with Jason Isbell and his wife, Amanda Shares. And um, Jacob was talking to like uh, Coulter Wall and somebody else was talking to you know so you know so and you have all these like really cool people and um yeah and, and it's strange when they turn out to be jerks that's that is a bummer now i will tell you that's in the minority but i remember meeting mary and shape and carpenter we played the show mary shape and carpenter was there and like i wasn't like super familiar with her you know like it's just my age like if i was a little bit older uh she was such a bitch and you're just like oh man that's such a pain and whereas you know like i remember meeting tom morello or dave matthews and being like oh you guys are amazing we always joke too because if we meet an artist even if we don't like their music and they turn out to be awesome we add it to the van playlist so like we weren't finger 11 fans we weren't tonic fans tonic is a great example we played this show, one show with tonic they were so great like so funny so self-effacing we really, really liked them as humans. And then, you know, so every time that, you know, if you could only, see, anytime that song comes on the van, <laughs> we vehemently defend it. You know, it's just a pop song. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong. It's just a pop song, you know, it's good for them, yeah. you know? Um, so that's what's so funny is, yeah, you, you meet a lot of people. And what's neat is a lot of times for us, you know, you'll meet someone in the food tent. They'll have no idea who the fuck you are. Like, um and you know uh, like i uh, i remember playing with flaming lips and you know oh. like uh, like why the fuck would they know who we are fair you know and then after you're done people being like then meeting them and then like seeing people you admire me like holy shit what is this band and you're just like wow that's 
fucking amazing. Thank Put you. Put that for... on my gravestone, please. That I would just yes. Want to take that. You know, I mean, and then sometimes you even just get the tour poster and you're like, I can't, what the hell is our name doing up there? You know, and I'm the one who got it there. And I'm still like, I still can't believe it. I mean, and now that's a cool thing to like, that you're talking about. Cause I mean, like you guys have been there 10 years. I'm sure people are now fans of your, like younger bands have come and see, to ask you like, Oh, all the are time. you, are you conscious of like that? We're like, Oh, make sure I'm not a dick to this younger band. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> totally. And, and to be, you know, and, and this is the other thing. A lot of times they reach out and they have questions um and or you know they're looking for some guidance and i always tell them same thing like i'm you know i'll send them a message saying listen i've read this i'm gonna get back to you give me a couple days i'm not ignoring you and i want i want them to know and i often say to them too if you see me at a show i know i look aloof it's because i'm like in business mode please say hello i'm very friendly and so it's yeah totally we we're we really are really cognizant of it we also like bringing you know bands out on the road like you know bringing new artists out on the road or, or bands that like people wouldn't necessarily like we we just think it's important that they see them anyways so yeah it's been it's been really really neat and and for us the same thing too you know when you go to a um a festival and you you see a band that you've never heard of and you're like and they blow you away it's like that is the best there's just nothing like that where yeah i love it or or side stage you look over and your heroes there you know and, and we've collabed now with tom green and uss and pocket dwellers and salads and all these bands we loved growing up and uh there was a band i loved from the 90s called glue leg and we're recording on their new record and um we're doing uh, craig Carter from ottawa so there's there's all these neat people and then you, they become your buds and you're like i'm just some idiot <laughs> what, 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 what i'm just you, some tall idiot with glasses yeah, and tattoos what is what, yeah. is what is my life <laughs> what is yeah and you know you just yeah and, and you know and immersively like obviously i'm no big deal but every once in a while you do get recognized especially if jacob and i hang out together i find like you know we got recognized in iowa we we're in sioux city iowa and uh that just blew our fucking brains out we we're just like wow you know like it's such a strange thing when that happens um because, you know, like, you don't, it's important, like, you know, when you're in your hometown, you don't act like something like that. It's not, you know, it's unbecoming and it's a dick move, you know. Um, so, it, but it is neat when you're, you're elsewhere and, and somebody is really excited, um, you know. We definitely have, you know, I've had, like, door knockers on, like, the hotel doors at, like, 2 a.m. Like, is this where the party is? And we'll start laughing. We're like, yeah, I know you would think that. <laughs> but, uh, no. And the great <laughs> thing is... And the great thing about this and, uh, and with you guys is that, like, you all have kids that will just humble you whenever your oh. egos get too high. <laughs> yeah, kids, kids <laughs> give you zero shits about your feelings. And there's, not, there's nothing like, you know, you play for 10,000 people, you come home and your kid wants a smoothie and they want it fucking now. Like, they don't, they don't <laughs> care. And you just stepped on one of their, their cars. and You're, you're so know, tired, like you're jet down. lagged. <laughs> yeah and they just like you're just like you know like i just did this really important thing that they just don't they don't care they don't care at all yeah kids kids are the great the great equalizer you know and they're upset for no reason or yeah it's just uh it is strange and i won't and and this is the unsung hero of hurricane is all of our partners and you know because e even if you don't have kids for just to like leave the person you love for like a long time is like it's like some people just can't get that in their brains they're like but does your family come with you on the road I'm like no. can, you think my fucking family <laughs> wants for that <laughs> yeah a i can't afford it but b you think my family wants to like come and like you know like sure we do a lot of great shows but we also play fucking the townhouse in sudbury you know it's like you they got better things to do you know than than to do that so to have people who understand, you know, it's like, okay, yeah, we're going to go for 70 days. See ya. You know, it's not, it's, it's not easy, but what's nice is that we've gotten to the point now where we can fly our families out. They can be, you know, come to Winnipeg for a week, come to Red Deer for a week, you know, something like that. When we have one of those, sometimes you just get a week where there's just not a ton of shows or something on the road. But I, I am, you know, as the agent, I believe if you're out there, you might as well be playing. And I, uh, I imagine that like sometimes like you mentioned like 
you know, you had to leave your family for a few days or seven days and that, sometime, and that sort of thing. And I imagine sometimes the partner's like, good, please leave. <laughs> I'm sick of it. And then yeah. it's like, you know, sometimes that might happen, sometimes not. But it's, it's so, you're, you're in such a time now where like, it's so easy to like get a hold of your family now. So oh, you how know, beneficial it, is that when you, like, you have a young family? Oh yeah. Well, I remember, you know, this, I'm really dating myself now, but I was quite young. And I went on my first big tour and I remember like calling home to like, I think my girlfriend at the time and like pumping quarters into a machine, hoping she would pick up. Right. And now even Please something is this call. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And like, even now, just like waking up, you know, if you're in a different time zone, you get a text, you know, Hey dad, have a great day. I'm, you know, I'm going to school now. And you get that and you're like, it, that that's all you need. You, you're just like, great. Everything's good you move on and you know to be able to facetime and to get messages and voice messages and memes whatever you know you know that things are are going well and yeah and and sometimes too you know if my kid wants to watch on stage i'll 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 do like uh like a live stream to them or something like that or i'll do a facetime oh, call and I'll, so cool. and I'll and i'll put it on like a music stand behind me see and then in between songs we'll be like hey and they're like oh i'm going to bed now all right night click and you know like what a what a fucking amazing thing it is, right? And to have all that stuff. I will say this, you know, when you get home from tour, you you need the family stuff. It's two or three days of just like pure joy. But then like the post-tour depression kicks in because like you said, nobody gives a fuck about you because you're home and you're not hot <laughs> shit and they don't give a fuck. They don't, there's laundry to do and, you know, do your part. And, you know, I've been with these kids. I need some time off, all those things. So that is, that's the, the balancing act. Right. And, and I think even this year when Jacob said, you know, I don't think I can do as many shows, you know, I was like, okay, well, we got to talk to Sylvie because we still, the band needs to do this, but we also, it doesn't behoove us to burn out Jacob, our main guy. So it's like, you know, let's where we can do shows with Sylvie and, you know, it's just like, let's, you know, it, with your friends, you, you know, like we have a business run. Sure. But also we're humans and we love our friends. And if they're telling you that it's stretching me too tight, then it's your job to back off and find a better answer, which we're doing. So that's, that's good. And uh, I, you got, you've mentioned like the kids a few times and I'm not sure how old your kids are. That's uh, your uh, own seven thing. and two. It's awesome. And so like you have fam, you have family, I'm calling them family because they are your family. So it's a big, one big happy family. My son, the hurricane is, um, have you guys like talked about like like have any of your kids like shown any kind of like inkling towards the music business is that something that you'd maybe want to uh you know I like encourage or like down or or, like please don't do it (laughs) i look how tired i am sort of thing (laughs) i you know it's funny because i i think you the people who i was actually talking to to a friend of mine about this the other morning over breakfast about how bizarre it is the desire to get on stage in front of people um and you know uh and you're you're a comic right you're saying yeah and and so you know to have the bravery and the audacity and all these things to to want to stand in front of people and just do this it's almost impossible to explain because you know you just you get this thing from it you can't it's a, it's, it's a, such a unique high like, like yeah seeing like people smiling laughing like it's yeah, such and a what, rewarding fun cool different yeah. and it doesn't buy experience it, sort of thing yeah and it doesn't always kick ass but when it does when you have them when we have when you them, have the power <laughs> yeah and even for us especially for me as the person with my left foot hitting the bass drum which moves people you know you really can like it's like this power thing it's really it's amazing in terms of my kids who knows right they sometimes say things like you know oh dad I, i'd be a musician but i want to go to space first i'm like well go try space you know that sounds um but yeah I, I, I don't know what advice i would give them you know i think i think i would be proud but also like you know maybe watch the beers but uh, other than that you know you, who who knows who knows what they'll who knows what they'll do all right well daniel i've taken up enough time uh get back to your lovely family thank you so much for being on the podcast before you go uh where can people find uh mice in the hurricane uh anywhere on anywhere all the socials please yes the best way to find us is m-s-t-h 
official.com that has tour dates and things like that. Our giant tour, which is uh, you know, our, our train spotting inspired poster, cane spotting, will be out uh, again, 90s reference. Um, I, I got you, don't worry. Mid <laughs> we're, in we're, I think the, we're the same age. So we're yeah, yeah pro- probably. Uh, and mid, uh, in mid February, it'll all come out. There's a few dates out right now, but uh, we're just kind of just holding it tight to our vest while we see how long the plague is going to do this fucking dumb shit. And then uh, hopefully by mid February, uh, things will start be going down and we can, we can announce more dates. There's lots. We're on the Facebooks. We're on the Instagrams. We even have young people in the band. So we're on TikTok. I don't really know how to get on there, but, uh, but we're there. And uh, so, you know, anywhere where you can find music, Spotify and Apple Music and Deezer, all that shit. You know, we really believe in making yourself available. And, and your YouTube. YouTube. I want people to fuck, fucking watch yeah, the videos. And, They're so and you good. know what? I'm the worst at promoting YouTube, but the truth is we got tons of funny shit on there. And Jacob and I, even as much as this morning, I've been talking about way more stupid shit. We went and got pedicures once and filmed it. We got to put it out. Yeah, I think the big hot t- uh, the hot thing to do now is like video vlogs and do like when you're doing your tour, like think about doing that sort of thing. Yeah, we like well, a, a weekly think, maybe or something like that. Well, I think you know Mike Tubi, our lighting director. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mike, he does all sorts of videography. So I think I think that's going to be the deal. He put out a little documentary of ours called Eye of the Storm, which is worth looking up. And it's in like 2017, right before things like blew the fuck up. So it's, it, but it's still pretty cool to see how it, it was going then. Oh, dude, it's this has been such a great chat. Uh, thank you so much for being on the podcast. I really My appreciate man. it. And I, lo- and I look forward to uh, seeing you guys perform this summer. I will definitely come out for a, a show for sure. And uh, you're in where? Sarnia? London. Oh, London. Oh, well, London. We'll see you in May then. Oh, perfect. I will. You, re- I... you remind me, I'll guest list you. Oh, uh, perfect. Thank you so much, sir. <laughs> thank you so much, Dan. I appreciate it. All right, my friend. Take care. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that podcast with Dan O'Shea of uh, My Son the Hurricane. Um, I have nothing but praise for this band these are uh all a bunch of good guys and gals and i mean i seen them when they first started back in st Catharines when they were the lower level l3 and now see them touring uh the world and like getting the job done it makes me very very proud to have known them for even just a little bit i mean it's so great to see people who have the talent do the damn thing and I think that's what I enjoy the, doing this podcast is talking to people who are doing the damn thing and uh, saying no to all the haters. Um, it's very much of a positive podcast. And I want to keep it that way. Um, if you want to check out My Son the Hurricane, they're on all the social medias. Check out them out on Spotify. Uh, all their songs are on there. Uh, check out their YouTube. They're one of the few bands that I that really put effort into their music videos and if you're an mtv or much music generation kid like myself uh you will actually appreciate that sort of artwork um what else can i tell you guys i mean they're touring all across canada or they've announced a bunch of dates for canada so they might be coming to a small town near you so check out their website my son the hurricane uh ca or dot com whatever it is that uh, check them out they'll just type them in google and you'll see it um and you know what? I think I'm going to leave you guys with some Mice on the Hurricane music. Uh, I'm going to take the video from YouTube. Sorry, Dan, I'm just going to borrow it for this uh, sake. Uh, we're going to leave you guys with uh, Mice on the Hurricane. The song is called Smile. The video is fantastic. The uh, It's it's very cool. It's very eerie, very ominous. Um, so we'll have a video for you, and you guys can listen to it uh, audibly as well. Uh, but until then, and until next time, we'll see you down the line. Cheers. This underdeveloped path in the grass And every year I cut through Like I'm smashing the glass And every tear that I drew 
Taught me something in fact I'll look back and see a pathway that's just littered in puddles Sight the difference between the bitter and the sour A deep breath, I'm taking time to smell the flowers Start cooking with spices Leaving out the condiment The love of a woman and the feeling of accomplishment Virgo, clean, creative and methodical Organized like the chocolates inside of a box A pot of gold, I've been unstable Like the water's in a kettle that I will be until the day the anxiety in my chest settles Cause I researched, did the work, and formed an opinion And man, I didn't even really like him from the beginning But now I'm just overwhelmed with the disappointing news That the bad guys can win and the good guys lose Hands finally feeling comfortable on my shoulders Call it maturity, man, I'ma just call it getting older And it's all good, and it's all in good health I need to stop impressing everybody and start impressing myself Cause I'm a man, a voice, an opinion Homo sapien, creatively inclined and proud to be Canadian Held down by a job that held me down for too long It's a shame when you and your paycheck don't get along But with no list, there's no selection And your consciousness is no correction And you're haunted with the thought of never getting out well, here it is, a new you, a clean slate, and a chance to break through. Cause when that ball drops, so does the hammer. If it's just us against the wall with a smile fit for the camera, this time it's ours. Let's take it and own it, adjust our perception and measure our measure.